Hey, what's up, everyone? God bless. Pray that you're doing well. Uh, I'm just stuck in a bit of traffic. Uh, I want to talk a bit. It's like the fourth or fifth attempt of me trying to do this video over the last couple of days, but maybe the timing wasn't right, whatever. Anyways, I'm in Corinthians. Um, there have been some community posts uh, recently about uh, Calvinism and stuff. And how the goal of the Calvinist is just to convert people to Calvinism, <laughs> which is, which I think is, which I think is true. It's funny. Um, so, uh, Paul says in first Corinthians chapter two, and I brethren, when I came to you came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Christ and him crucified. Does he say, I, I don't know anything, or I say, I, I, I'm not going to know anything among you save Christ and him crucified, and the 600 and something laws, and the Ten Commandments, and the feasts and the ordinances, and also I'm going to know about the five points of uh, the, the tulip and Calvinism, which <laughs> is so stupid. Uh, no, he said Christ and him crucified. Are people pointing you to Jesus Christ or are they appoint you, pointing you to a set of rules, a set of ideas, a set of ordinances, a set of ideologies or unsound doctrine, whatever, and trying to convert you and convince you of their argument? Or are they pointing you to Jesus Christ and eternal life in him received by faith? Are they pointing you to Christ as our heavenly high priest, as our life, as us being crucified with Christ? Reminding you that there is no burden on us, on our flesh, to perform. There is no demand on us. God is not demanding something from us in terms of effort or emotional state or emulation of something or of a behavioral pattern in order to please him, to earn rewards from him, to earn fellowship, to stay saved, which is a lie because once you believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again for our justification on the third day. You are eternally saved. You will never be plucked from the Father's hand. You can never be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are they pointing you to Jesus Christ and the riches of him, the meat of the word? Hallelujah. Or are they pointing you to a argument they want to convince you of? It's like the, uh, arguing for Calvinism is like the arguing for flat earth, round earth, uh, arguing for aliens, arguing, it doesn't matter what you're arguing for, you're still trying to prove a point, and you're wanting to be right. Like, these people are taking anti-Christ, the Calvinists, they're taking, or Calvinist works justification, whatever it is, they're taking a works-based doctrine, saying that you have to work for your salvation, in whatever deceptive language they use. Again, they're trying to use big sounding words. They're trying to use spiritual language. They're trying to use a sort of uh, a language that appears to be something that it's not in order to convince you of an argument that is only antichrist. They're not arg they, like they they don't have the love for God that they claim they do because all they're doing is arguing against God's method of justification. They're either they're arguing for perseverance of the saints, you have to prove you're saved by your works, which is works justification, or a limited atonement, which is contrary to the fact that Jesus Christ paid the debt for all sin was buried and rose again on the third day of justification. He died for all. He died for the world. Hallelujah. He died for the sins of the world. So that whosoever, anyone who believes in, in him, in Jesus Christ, 
received eternal life again by faith um or whatever they're whatever they're trying to argue they're not arguing for the love of the truth they're arguing for the love of their own desire and lust to be right and also for a hatred of people because many of these people know the gospel reject the gospel and argue for works justification because they want to replace Christ they want to replace God and be him they want to be judge jury and executioner and not a someone who liberally gives in grace hallelujah like rewards are reckoned in grace by God hallelujah and these Calvinists if they were judged during execution they wouldn't reward anyone they just keep beating people because they are hard taskmasters because they're worshiping a hard taskmaster the hard taskmaster is their is their God that God their God is their belly they glory in their shame um and again, uh, like some of the posts that said that uh, were shared today, is they like, I want everyone to be a Calvinist. They didn't even say, I want everyone to have life in Christ. They, they want everyone to believe the gospel. They claim that Calvinism is the gospel. They claim that they want everyone to be a Calvinist. So you still want everyone to be dead in their sins then is what you're saying, because you don't want people to be a child of God. You don't want them to have faith in Jesus Christ for eternal life. You want them to be Calvinist, which is antichrist. It's heresy. Um, so, you know, avoid that. Uh, again, I determined not to know anything among you save Christ and him crucified. What are they pointing to? Hallelujah that, brothers and sisters, we point to Jesus Christ. We minister life, righteousness, the ministration of life, of righteousness, of the spirit, life in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is none righteous, no, not one. They have all gone out of the way and fallen short of the glory of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We are not righteous by our own meritorious efforts in the flesh, in the law. No. Hallelujah. Uh, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Again, is someone trying to convert you to their argument so that your faith would stand in man's wisdom? Or are they pointing you to Jesus Christ and that you are absolutely, without a doubt, 100% justified by faith in Jesus Christ, you have presently and eternally peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are presently and eternally complete in Christ. You lack nothing in him. Hallelujah. Or are they trying to win you to an argument? This idea that is, again, anti-Christ because they promote themselves and their own works. They are spraying perfume and putting on makeup and fancy clothes and saying, look at me in my flesh, this sack of meat, this condemned, corrupt meat bag. I am convincing you, I am trying to convince you that you need to accept it as holy and righteous and that you also need to clean yourself up so that you can try to convince others that you're holy and righteous as if that's the standard is behavioral modification yes righteousness is behavior modification that's what they say righteousness is not sinning no righteousness is a person it's jesus christ first corinthians uh is that the bottom here yeah but of him in christ jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Christ is our wisdom. Christ is our righteousness. Christ is our sanctification. And Christ is our redemption. If you say there are works for anything, you are a liar. Um, 
people can be unclear, right? People can be like, oh, well, I'm supposed to like, I'm supposed to like, uh, like please God by keeping the laws. Um, and you can correct them in the truth and they can receive and be like, oh, wow, wait, really? It's just, it's just living by faith. The just shall live by faith. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ who lives in me in the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's all that what he did and I can rest in his finished redemptive work. Hallelujah. 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 Indeed. Um, but many will show that they actually never believe the gospel because they will come in contact with the gospel, reject it, and then double down, triple down, and fight against Christ and everything that he accomplished. And will say, nope, it's not just enough to believe. You've got to do all these things. No, he's not your sanctification. Nope, you've got to, you're, the sanctification is the law. The law is your sanctification. The law is your redemption. The law is, is actual wisdom. No, by the law is the knowledge of sin. You want to go to the law? You're going to grow in the knowledge of sin. Let me know how that works out for you. Because it sucks. Speaking from personal experience of many of us, myself, that we were in Galatian era at one point. When I was first saved, I didn't understand what the Christian life was like because nobody talked about it. Because everyone that I talked to had a watered down version of justification, which is get a ticket, go to heaven. You see, It's like you never sinned. But now you got to get to work to please God, to earn rewards, to uh, show the pastor that you're really involved and that you really are saved. Look at what I look at all this effort I'm putting in. I'm off, I'm volunteering all the time and I'm reading my Bible every day and I and I tithe a lot and I put on a fake face and I and I virtue signal in the flesh and I try to emulate what you think I should be. Aren't I good? Aren't I righteous? No. You're just striving in the flesh. You're acting in a carnal mind, and you're going to be hostile with God. You're going to be enmity with God, and you're not going to have rest or the present tense enjoyment of your salvation because you're too busy about pleasing other people with their false doctrine. Drop it. Suffer the loss. Gain Christ. And then suffer the persecution from the religious crowd that wants to glorify their Ishmaels. Ishmaels. Uh... And say, oh, let my let Ishmael uh, live before you. Look, let my works be counted as righteousness instead of the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ. No, drop it all. Suffer the persecution from those people and gain Christ. And it's so much better. It's so much better. Don't trust me. Trust the word. <laughs> trust Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um. Uh, again, that your faith should stand not in that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that, that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. I posted this, I think, yesterday or the day before. I'm a terrible judge of time. That, yo, we're the friends of God. God is our friend. Jesus is our best friend. And we are his friends. Hallelujah. And the mystery... Of Christ in you, the hope of glory, is now being shared with us by God, hallelujah, by his spirit. Again, Christ is being pressed into us by the spirit. God gives the increase, hallelujah. Christ ministers himself to us in the flow of the spirit by faith. It is not... Christ is pressed into you, a weight of glory of Christ is pressed into you by you doing your best in your strength to keep the law. No mention of the high priestly ministry of Christ, no mention of the Spirit, no mention of God is our strength, Christ is our strength, we are weak. No, it's all, I am strong, I can do this, 
I'm really holy, I'm really righteous, let me prove it to you. And they do it by pointing away from Jesus Christ, who is righteousness, it's a living person, and pointing to themselves and boasting in themselves. But again, God has revealed them unto us. The mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory, hallelujah, has been revealed to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so things, uh, sorry, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. And the spirit that worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Hallelujah, that we, the just shall live by faith. Oh, Lord, thank God. It's and it's such a tangible experience as well. It's not just high-minded sounding philosophy and language. No, it's, it's actual Christ as life. And you don't understand, then believe. We believe, then the Lord gives the understanding. He gives spiritual understanding and wisdom. And he works it into us as we go through things, trials, tribulations, uh checkmate situations, blah, blah, blah. He works Christ into us, a weight of glory, a shining of Christ pressed into us by the Spirit through faith. Um, again, uh, we have received, sorry, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, the religious evil world, this evil age, we haven't received that spirit, hallelujah, a bondage of fear, the hard taskmaster of Baal. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, hallelujah, that we might know the things of God, or sorry, might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Are we given the spirit to know all the laws and how we need to keep them in our own strength. No, we are given the spirit of sonship so that we may have eternal life, so that we may be headed up in Christ, so that we may know the things that are freely given to us that are of God, that come from God. Hallelujah. The newness of life. Joy and peace and wisdom and understanding and love and the patience of Christ himself, it's all of him, it's all of who he is. The person and work of Jesus Christ, everything that God is, God who he is, hallelujah, is ministered to us in the spirit by faith. We are to know the things that are freely given to us of God. Are they wage? Or do you put God in your debt and then they're given to you as a payment? No, they are freely given. So people that say you got to work to make to please God, you got to work to know you're really being sanctified because your sanctification is measured by your outward performance. No. And we've all heard those pastors. They don't have a ministry. I mean, they do. They have the ministration of condemnation and death. They don't minister Christ as life. Thank God that he has moved us on from such things and brought us into the meat of the word to enjoy Christ himself as life. To experience and get to know Christ through his high priestly ministry. To get to know the things that are freely given to us of God by his spirit. And we, we get to know them. We grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, trying to make things up and trying to formulate arguments to prove a point so that we can convert you to a set of ideas and not growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ himself. No, not in the words of man's wisdom which teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Hallelujah. But the natural man receiveth not the things... Of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So they hear the gospel 
they hear about the high priestly ministry of Christ. They see the building up of the body of Christ in faith. I mean, they can't actually see it because they count it all as a waste. They count it as dead works because 99% of them have not believed the gospel. Therefore, they are unsaved. Therefore, they are still in Adam, in their natural man, and they don't have the spirit of God. So they cannot hear the things that are freely given to us of God. They cannot see the value in the preaching of Christ and him crucified. They cannot see the building up of the body of Christ as the good work. Or not just the singular good work, but as the good works that Christ has prepared. It prepared. It is him that does it all. And we get to partake in grace. Again, I'm not here speaking right now saying, oh, you know what, Lord, I think I'm going to go do a video so that I can get, uh, so I can get rewarded. Yeah, I think I want some reward. So I'm going to go do this thing and then you're going to see that I did it and I'm going to put you in my debt and then I'm going to get a reward for it. So thanks. Appreciate it. No, um, it is in grace. It's, uh, I, I'm being comforted in Christ and I'm sharing that with the body. Again, we have received, we receive these things by the spirit, the things that the spirit searches out, or the, the spirit of God searches out the deep things of God. We have Christ impressed into us by faith, the knowledge of him. We are built up. It's Christ's fruit coming out. We share that partaking in the reward in grace because it's just out of an enjoyment. It's not a demand and I'm not doing it to put God in my debt. I'm just speaking because Christ is life. I want to partake of life. I want my brothers and sisters to partake of life and have their conscience settled and enjoy the rest set aside for the children of God. Like whenever we're doing videos, I'm, I'm never even thinking about, I don't even think about rewards ever. Uh, not, not ever, but like very, very rarely do I ever think about rewards because I just, I, if they're in grace, you can't put God in your debt. So like, what am I going to gain, gain by focusing on that? I'm going to probably, if I mean, if you listen to other pastors, you're definitely going to come away thinking that you are lazy and you need to do more for God. And he's displeased with you because that's their reward system is debt wage, but you're the debtor and you can never pay off the debt. There's never enough. So don't listen to that nonsense. We're being comforted in, in Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is building up his body in the full assurance of faith and the knowledge of himself. We are gaining that knowledge in our trials and tribulations our, as our faith is tried. And then we are sharing that knowledge here, other places, in the preaching of Christ and him crucified. in which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And brothers and sisters, you hear it because they're spiritually discerned, because you have the Spirit of God in you, because you have believed that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and arose again on the third day for your justification. Hallelujah. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, but he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Again, in chapter 1, he's talking about, yo, be of one mind. There's contentions among, among you. Y'all are talking about, I'm of Paul, I'm of Cephas. No. We are of Christ. Have the mind of Christ and judge in, in the mind of Christ according to the gospel. Discern, which is to approve that which is excellent. Judge these false doctrines. Get them out. Judge these things that are happening according to the gospel and realize you have so much more in Christ. You have riches in Christ. Brothers and sisters, together, be of one mind, be of one spirit, be of one faith, because you are of one body, you are of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, which is being baptized into Christ by faith. So think on these things, right? And stop with the fighting, trying to boast, find something to boast of in the flesh by saying, I'm a Paul, I'm a Cephas, I'm a Calvinist. <laughs> no, we are of Christ by faith. So we... <laughs> we judge all things according to the gospel, according to the sound doctrine of Christ. And we ourselves are judged of no man. Who is he that condemneth? Or where is, where is it in Romans 8? That's what it reminds me of. The spiritual judgeth all things, but he himself is judged of no man. Um, 
verse 34 of Romans 8 now, uh, or verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God or love of Christ? Shall t- tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If their argument is separating you from Christ, like in your conscience, because if you believe the gospel, you can't be separated. From the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can never be plucked from the Father's hand. You cannot lose your salvation. I don't care how much you go back out into the pig slop. You cannot lose your salvation if you at one point believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. You are a born again, saved, sealed child of God forever. You have eternal life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You are the building of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are the habitation of God in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. So, but someone can damage your conscience if they have unsound doctrine and false teaching and cause you to believe or think that there is something separating you from God. No, nothing is separating you from God. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by faith in him. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hopeth maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Again, he's giving another example of we go through things. We're not separated from God. Don't, don't, uh, don't believe people, again, trying to damage your conscience with their false teaching, saying, oh, yeah, you feel like this because you're separated from God because of unrepentant sin. Or because you haven't cleaned yourself up or, well, you stopped tithing at church, so you stopped being blessed at work. No. What a buffoon. Whoever says that is an absolute buffoon. Uh, No, there is nothing separating you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And those trials, those weaknesses, those dry seasons that we go through, the trying of our faith. We can glory in those things also because in our weakness, Christ is our strength and his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And like Paul says, he glories in his tribulations, in his weaknesses, because in the the power of God tabernacles over him. The life of Christ springs up from within him. And it comes out as ministry, as ministration of life of Christ and and righteousness. So again, Don't look to outward performance and appearance. Look to Christ. Know that these dry seasons, the tribulations, whatever you're going through, they work with patience and patience experience and experience hope. All of this is in the faith of Christ being pressed into you by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And hope maketh not ashamed. This hope is not, oh, I hope I get something. No, this hope is Christ. This hope, Christ as life, the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah makes us, maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. When that increase come, when God gives the increase, when he shines that light and we gain Christ, the knowledge of him, we completely forget about everything we go through, everything we've gone through, because we are in newness. Hallelujah. We are in newness. In Christ, gaining Christ, the glory of God, hallelujah, is being pressed into us. The righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. We are gaining him, being pressed, again, by the Spirit in faith. I've said that a hundred times now, but that's how it works, yo. Um, No, we want 1 Corinthians. So, that's to, again, say that the spiritual judge judges all things, again, according to the gospel, according to the high priestly ministry of Christ, according to these spiritual things that, brothers and sisters, we hear because we have the Spirit of God. And it's not something that you hear and you're like, oh, okay, I understand it all right now and I get it. No, it, it's 
revealed to us bit by bit. We are have Christ impressed to us from faith to faith, from glory to glory, a little bit at a time. Yeah, most of us would be like, yo, Lord, just do it all. Get it all in there. Get, <laughs> I'm tired of going through these weaknesses. Get it all in there. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Um, and we ourselves are judged of no man. Because again, what are they going to say? What are these are the people that act, your, your church goers, these institutional church people that boast in their own righteousness, boast in their own works and reject the gospel. That's not every one of them. Okay. But that's the, that's the crowd that I'm talking about. These people that try to carry you off as spoil and disaffect you by preaching leaven, by preaching law, by preaching false gospels and say, no, it's not Christ. You got to do this thing. Who cares if they judge you? If you leave, you are going to gain Christ. And you are going to understand your death with him better. As he gives the increase. Because you will. Come to Christ alone. And stop. Finagling your way. In and out of men's religion. uh, Religion and traditions and philosophy in vain deceit. trying to get a reward from them by the high five, the, the side hug and the smiles say, Oh, God bless you. Oh, you sin. Oh, well, we better be accountable to each other. Remind each other of every time we sin. No. How about y'all just preach Christ to each other and enjoy fellowship. Enjoy the life of Christ in faith. Stop having your mind so focused on sin and stop with the flattery among men and the and the uh, fake virtue signaling. There's no unity in that. So, suffer the persecution. Who cares if they judge you? They don't have any life to minister to you. They're only going to lie. Minister death and condemnation because all they preach is dead letter. Come to Christ. Enjoy Him by faith. Nobody can judge you. God, God is the only one who judges us. Right? And guess what? The judgment has been moved off of us because of our faith in Jesus Christ and his finished redemptive work. Christ took everything for us on our behalf. Hallelujah. He paid the debt for all sin. We are no longer condemned. We have passed from death to life. We are not scared of a judgment. We are looking forward to seeing our bridegroom face to face and being made like him. And right now, having him pressed into us by faith, growing in the knowledge of him in the full assurance of faith. Who cares if people judge us? They judge according to the flesh because they're carnal. And many of them, many, 99% of them are unsaved. And I'm saying that because that's the vast majority of institutional church people. That's the vast majority of self-professing Christians is people who reject the gospel. Yes, there, of course, there are people who believe the gospel and still are in Galatian air and deceived. And you still have to mark and avoid those people if they can persist in error and those people don't have to be afraid of judgment either those people don't have to be afraid of condemnation or anything but in their conscience that's what they're dealing with because they think that it's pleasing to god to perfect the flesh or that they can earn blessing or reward by perfecting the flesh because they have fallen under false teaching and then sort of refuse the truth because they've just hardened themselves that's a whole different video But if they believe the gospel at one point, then they're saved and they could actually approach God by faith and enjoy him and rest in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ. And hallelujah that God loses none of his. Hallelujah. Christ doesn't lose a single one. Hallelujah. He's so faithful. How many of us fell into deception, fell into Galatian error, Colossian error, uh, whatever, unleavened error, whatever you want to call it. How many of us fell into that and God is faithful and brought us out? Doesn't matter if it was one year, five years, 20 years, 40, 50 years. He was faithful and he brought you out and now there's an enjoyment of Christ. Amen, dude. Amen. Thank you, God. So brothers and sisters, we have the mind of Christ. And we can enjoy him by faith. And again, it's not like that's not a demand and that's not an instant emotional experience. That's a comfort that you do not have to go back to Moses, which is spiritual, spiritual fornication, adultery. We're going back to the old husband after being betrothed to a new one. 
Christ himself, hallelujah, by death, being betrothed to another. We, the, we've died to the old one. Dead to the law, but alive unto God in Christ. Dead to the law so that we could be alive unto God in Christ. Hallelujah. You don't mix the two. And the just shall live by faith. We are crucified with Christ. There's not a demand on us to pick yourself up and perform. And if you're in weakness, if you're in a situation of checkmate, guess what? Christ is being wrought into you. You are gaining a weight of glory. You are gaining the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It may not seem like it because we got a lot of pains and discomforts and situations that are completely out of control and out of our hands. But when we look to Christ in faith, we have hope. We have a living hope. It's not a living hope of one day I'm going to get out of here. I mean, yeah, that's part of it because that's true. But it's our living hope that today is the day of rest. Today, right now, you can look to Christ in faith and avail yourself of the grace of God and satisfy and purge that conscience by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is available to you right now, today. That doesn't mean all your pain is going to go away. That doesn't mean your situation is going to go away. Immediately. But we have, a, we have a living hope. It's, it's a person, Jesus Christ. Today is the day of rest. Today is the day of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life, yes. And believe that he has got you, his high priestly ministry. You are complete in him. He is working himself in you, a weight of glory that cannot be seen in this age. So these people that come in contact with the gospel and they see the building up of the body of Christ and they'd say it's dead works. Oh, you're just lazy. You love your sin. Who cares? They, they are judging according to the flesh. They are carnal. So who cares what they say? Suffer it. Leave. Leave those churches. Leave those people. Move forward. Look forward to the prize and the high calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is a that is not a high calling of look forward and you better get out and street preach every day or you're unsaved and because you're not proving it by your works. No, is look forward to the high mark and prize and calling of our Lord Jesus Christ because he's called us up to so much something so much better than this vain jangling law keeping nonsense that people are trying to peddle, saying that you're perfected by the law or that you're saved by the law or that you earn rewards by the law. No. That's not the means of the Christian life. That is not God's plan is for you to be kept under bondage and fear and debt. No, it is God's good pleasure and his will to have everything headed up in Christ, to have many sons in glory. Hallelujah. Christ multiplied us. We are his inheritance. Hallelujah. So leave the nonsense behind. Leave the vain janglers behind. Look forward to Christ who is our life. Mm, hallelujah. I hope you stuck to the end because this last 10 minutes I feel was like some good stuff. Anyways, I'm back and I got to put this stuff in the fridge. Uh, 